Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt. So first of all, I want to start today's video with a massive apology. Uh, I did release a video just recently on the Iskander missile, which I completely screwed up. I was missing and mixing stuff and there weren't the right footage and it was the wrong missile and different types. Folks, I really apologize. My research was terrible on that project. Um, I was very confused looking at multiple different sources. I think I was cross-referencing and trying to produce my script and just got really confused in general. So I really apologize. Um, I I'm certainly not a subject matter expert when it comes to Russian crews, ballistic, and all sorts of missile systems, because I'm just not. Uh, so I do really apologize. I know a lot of you weren't very happy when I was showing footage of different systems and talking about the wrong systems and how cruise missiles work, etc. And just totally not talking about the Iskander properly. But today, we are going to get this right. We are actually going to be talking about the K300P, known as the Bastion P, or its NATO reporting name as SSC-5 Stooge. And this is a Russian mobile coastal defense missile system. And the reason I wanted to talk about this missile is there's been a lot of focus on the channel recently against naval weapon systems that are designed to knock out things like carrier battle groups or other heavy duty ships. And in fact, I did just do a video on the RBS-15 or Robot System 15 anti-ship missile, which is primarily a ship launched missile but this one is a ground surface based launch missile as you can see with this three-man crew rocking in this freaking massive beast of a vehicle it's about to launch two tubes of this incredible missile system now this platform isn't your ordinary missile system it's designed to protect primarily coastal waters with a mobile system that could target anything from a single patrol boat to an entire aircraft carrier strike group it boasts the P-800 Onyx missile, a supersonic powerhouse that puts Mach 2.5 into action, ensuring no escape for its prey and making it very hard to track down and engage. But what makes it truly remarkable is this platform's mobility, mounted on the massive 8x8 MZ KT-7930 chassis. The Bastion P can roll into position, launch missiles and vanish before anyone can figure out what hit them and can get into some really nasty environments. With a range of up to 300 kilometers, it doesn't guard just the shore, it owns the ocean around the coastal defenses of Russia. Let's talk a little bit now, though, about the star of the show, the missile, the P-800 Onyx. It's not just a simple missile platform, it's a predator with some serious firepower. Picture this missile that can hit about Mach 2.5, and that's two and a half times the speed of sound, while hugging very close to the sea to avoid radar detection. And it's a bit like a stealthy cheetah with a turbocharger. The P-800 is also known as the Yak Hunt for export, and is the ship killer. It is truly a ship killer, and powered by a dual propulsion system, a solid fuel rocket booster for takeoff, which I absolutely love, that popping out of the tube, popping off of the front, and that's almost like that, that sound just sounds incredible and it also has a liquid fuel ramjet for cruising this combo gives it an impressive range of 300 kilometers when flying high to low trajectory and it doesn't just reach its target it devastates it with a 250 kilogram warhead it can basically obliterate ships infrastructure and anything else in its crosshairs on the waves What's more fascinating though is the missile's intelligence. The Onyx is equipped with advanced guidance systems that allow it to pick the most critical target within a group. So if a carrier is hiding in a fleet of decoys, which could be other destroyers or other ships from frigates protecting it, the Onyx knows which ship to go for. In short, the P-800 is certainly the muscle behind the Bastion P, which makes it one of the most formidable coastal defense systems for Russia. The engineering that is put into the chassis, though, is just as cool. It is an absolute beast and really proves that mobility is very, very important when trying to set up coastal defenses because of coastlines that are certainly in the vast landscape of Russian territory. It's very desolate and very difficult to get things like recovery or even just civilization to support your troops that are going out in these platforms. So they have to be very functional to get where they need to go and go in any environment, any terrain, any weather to launch these missiles because ships can exploit coastlines very easily. Each Bastion P battery consists of multiple components, the launch vehicles, command vehicles, and support vehicles. The launch vehicle, operated by a three-person crew, carries two of the P-800 Onyx missiles in a ready-to-fire configuration with very minimal setup. Its deployment and the systems being set up are ready to launch with roughly five minutes, depending on the competency of the crew and whether or not the site is suitable to launch. For instance, if you're in really deep snow, you do have to do a little bit of work to make sure that those rocket pods can actually seat down and not come out at an angle. 
but 5 minutes is fairly impressive and once in position it can remain operational for 3 to 5 days without any further support and up to 30 days with a combat support vehicle allowing these to work in the most desolate isolated regions of the Russian territories. This combination of mobility and quick deployment make the Bastion P a nightmare for naval adversaries that may wish to exploit certain coastlines or areas of, I guess, exploitation where they can get in forces. It can fire and relocate before a counterattack even begins. The missiles can be fired in rapid succession, not requiring a huge cooldown time between each tube. Within just 5 seconds between each launch, this is giving a huge capability and tactical necessity to get the missiles airborne, which gives less time for an adversary to respond or even figure out and track where the attack was originating from. The system isn't really designed for prolonged engagements in a single location though, its true strength lies in its ability to shoot and scoot. Once the tubes are emptied and launched, the vehicle can pack up and move before the enemy knows what hit them. The system isn't really left out in the open either, it tends to be protected by a multitude of other resources around the area. The command and control vehicle is certainly the hub of the Bastion P and if that is taken out it's going to really struggle coordinating missile launches and ensuring everything runs smoothly. So when they are targeted they're always going to go for the command and control variant than they are for the actual tube launches. Since its introduction, the Bastion P hasn't just been a showpiece, it's been deployed in some of the world's most geopolitical tense regions. One notable example is the Kuril Islands. Back in 2011, Russia decided to station these systems there as part of their strategy to reinforce their territorial claims, a move that of course did not go unnoticed by their neighbours. But its capabilities became even clearer in Syria. In 2016, the Bastion P was used in a way that surprised military analysts. Instead of targeting ships, it actually launched a P-800 Onyx missiles at land-based targets. This wasn't a simple off-label use though. It demonstrated the system's versatility and really expanded its tactical relevance. When you're using an anti-ship missile to knock out ground-based targets, it's a bit of a game changer. These real-world applications show the system isn't just theoretically able to do so, it proved it. It's been tested in active conflict zones and has proven to be more capable of adapting to complex scenarios. Its use in Syria, for instance, highlighted its precision but also raised questions about its role in land-based conflict, showing that it isn't just a coastal defense system locked into its original purpose. Russia hasn't kept all of the Bastion P all to itself. A few countries have decided this system is worth the investment. Vietnam was actually one of the earliest adopters purchasing the system back in 2011. They integrated it into their coastal defense forces, which makes sense given their extensive coastline and territorial disputes with the South China Sea. For Vietnam, Bastion P is a way to maintain a stronger presence without the need for an extensive navy. Egypt has also brought the system into its arsenal, aiming to secure its Mediterranean coastlines and critical infrastructure like offshore gas fields. It's clear for the countries with maritime interests, the Bastion P fills a very specific need, especially for those who can't rely on massive naval fleets for constant patrols. And these nations aren't just buying a product, they're buying a strategy with these missile platforms. With that mix of mobility and firepower, Bastion P offers that flexible alternative to traditional naval defenses. And yes, it's not a perfect system, for many nations it's just a cost-effective way to strengthen defense without needing a massive fleet of ships or lots and lots of money. And for me, having that flexibility to put them across any kind of terrain is also a big game changer. I mean, Vietnam certainly is not the most pleasant environment to try and travel vehicles across really difficult terrains. Like any good piece of military hardware, it has not stayed static. Over the years, there have been several variants which have emerged to cater to different operational needs. The K300P is the most recognizable, the mobile variant mounted on the 8x8 vehicle chassis, but there's also the K103S, a silo-based version designed for stationary coastal defense. While the mobile version emphasizes flexibility, the silo variant prioritizes a more permanent, long-term presence, especially in the strategically vital locations for Russia. Another version worth mentioning is the Bastion E, which is clearly the export-oriented model that's tailored to meet the needs of international buyers. While the details about its specific modifications are obviously kept under wraps, it's designed to be more adaptable for different militaries and contexts of what they're using it for. These variants show that the Bastion system isn't quote a one-size-fits-all solution. Whether it's mobile, stationary, or adapted for foreign buyers, it's clear that the system's design philosophy revolves around flexibility and customization. 
I mean, you've got to remember that Russia has a coastline of 37,653 kilometers, and it's very difficult to adequately police or control maritime borders of that size. The collapse of the Soviet Union meant that Russia really lost most of its navy as well as access to ports that could be used year-round, and nonetheless, Moscow sought to maintain these naval ambitions, investing in the Admiral Kustanov aircraft carrier and modernizing some of its fleet to carry the 3M54 series Calibre cruise missiles. The Bastion, the Stooge, and the 3K60 Bal Senet, or SSC-6, are the primary coastal defense systems used by Russian naval forces. They do provide a pretty good standoff precision strike capability, but it is certainly time to start looking at further upgrades for this platform. They replace Soviet-era systems such as the 4K501 Rubets, or the SSC-3 Styx, not to be confused with the Rubets ICBM, and the P-35B Redout, or SSC-1 Sapal, which is an anti-ship missile with ranges from 80 km to 270 km. It really is, though, a formidable system, and can reach top speeds of 750 meters a second, and descends to an altitude of around 10 to 15 meters in its terminal phase to try and avoid detection. However, there is a lot of talk about whether or not these missiles are very good at being able to avoid counter-missile fire, and, you know, phalanx missiles like the standard missile are certainly able to take this particular system out. But like anything with Russia, it's going to be pure weight and volume of fire. They're not going to launch one or two missiles at a fleet or a ship. They're going to launch probably 40 to 50 of these things at once, totally overwhelming the you know naval or coastal uh, defenses that are trying to protect the ships at any one time. There's also the 3K60 BAL. It's another mobile system designed to fire the 3M24 anti-ship cruise missile, a Soviet-era design. It's a subsonic cruise missile powered by a turbofan with a cruise speed of around 27 meters a second and a range of 120 kilometers. And that is armed with a 145 kilogram semi-armor piercing warhead that can cruise at a height of around 10 to 15 meters again, dropping to 1.5 meters for its terminal phase. A later version of the missile had an extended range to 260 kilometers, and guidance was provided via satellite data link with an active radar and seeker for the terminal phase. The Onyx missile itself flies aerodynamically using its cropped delta wings mounted in a cruciform at the middle of the missile's fuselage. It possesses a very distinctive launch sequence which it shares with the BrahMos. The missile lifts up from the launch tube and engages a stabilizing sequence using a brief pulses of rockets in its nose cone which then drops off. The missile reorientates itself and a pair of powerful rockets fire sequentially to turn the missiles 90 degrees so it's parallel to the surface and thus the rocket begins its flight, ditching the nose cone to open the ramjet, intake the air and off it goes. And these missiles are not cheap, roughly one million dollars per missile. Including the carrier which is another seven million, you're looking at a very expensive platform, but for something that can actually take out an aircraft carrier it's a worthy investment. Together, the 3K60 BAL and the K300P Bastion P present several challenges to defending vessels. As the speeds of the missiles differ, a ship must be able to prioritize its engagement of incoming missiles, some that may be supersonic, and possibly reverse the capacity to engage a large quantity of subsonic missiles. The dual-mode seeker of the PH-100 Onyx missile also ranges challenges for soft-kill solutions. Targeting is provided by a mix of land, air and sea assets, however it's unclear how capable Russian forces are in coordinating data gathered by these dispersed systems. Nevertheless, these systems are emblematic of Russia's drive to modernize the ability of its forces to conduct long-range standoff engagements. And it's demonstrated its willingness to conduct missile strikes in Ukraine and engage stationary critical infrastructure with hundreds of land and maritime cruise missiles. It follows that the coastal defense systems would play a role in engaging an opponent's shipping and its naval vessels if they can be brought within reach. Russia's tendency to deploy its coastal defense systems to islands such as the disputed elements of the Kuril Island chain or onto ice flows in the Arctic also suggests that the systems may be found further beyond Russia's coast, extending their engagement ranges into unexpected areas. If nothing else, finding and engaging these assets will add to the targeting burden of any force involved in a conflict with Russia. So what do you think of this weapon system? I think the P-800 Onyx is an incredible missile, or the Yaghond missile, and the Bastion P to launch it is certainly a vehicle platform or a missile system 
that's going to have opposing military commanders either ground or naval based a little hot under the collar and a little bit nervous when you know these things are on station with the ranges that they have to fire these missiles. I would love to hear your opinion on this missile platform and the systems that it uses. Once again, I really do apologize for the Iskander video. I'm going to try my best to do better. And again, if I make any mistakes in this video, please correct me and I'll try my best to modify and correct them for next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you could leave me a like or a dislike uh, on that thumb button, it really does help me in the algorithm. Even if you hate my channel, I'd love for you to give me a little battle in the comment section below uh, of course those of you who have been supporting my channel financially through patreon and paypal thank you so much it really does mean a lot to me to support and continue my youtube journey and i appreciate you being here have a wonderful day all the best bye bye